Welcome to Mindful Monday. I'm so fucking excited to have you here. I love it when you show up and I hope these talks are helping you come up with some ideas that may help you in your life and resonate with you. I'm never trying to tell anyone how to live their life. I know I've appreciated having some people that I have resonated with intently and hearing their stories and how it helped me. And that's what I'm here for, to share my story and all these things that are helping me really live a life of abundance and happiness. And that's not ever to say that I don't have mornings where I'm not motivated or even blocks of mornings because that's actually been happening to me the last few weeks. Ever since I got back from Alaska to see my children, I have felt kind of meh. I, I think I have a lot going on, like health wise. I believe that I'm going through menopause. I'm having so many of those symptoms. If you ladies can understand what I'm going through, no matter how many workouts I do, how many times I go to the gym, how healthy I'm eating, my body is significantly changing and holding on to fat. And I've been struggling to even get an appointment to see a doctor. But another thing that you have to concern yourself with is a lot of people don't want to treat you. But I've really been looking into natural ways to treat um, menopause. And I believe with my symptoms, I have high estrogen because when that occurs, it, you get belly fat and increased fat on your hips. And I can tell you, I haven't had, my body has changed significantly, especially since I'm a lifter and work out five, six days a week. And this has not been a problem for me. I eat very clean and healthy. I don't have a lot of sugar in my life. I don't eat a lot of processed foods. So these things are happening to my body, even though I'm doing all the right things. So I'm having to, let me tell you the story of what I've been going through. Um, last September, I think around the end of September, I started having heart palpitations and it was kind of freaking me the fuck out. So that was when the first um, time I went to actually the emergency room because it was really more elevated and it was at night, which was concerning me because I had laid down in bed and it was increasing even though I was laying down. It like made it feel like it was hard to take deep breaths. And I have to tell you how I know that there are good doctors out there and I'm by no means um, talking about you. I'm talking about the situation I went through at the emergency room and it was very rush, rush, get you out of there. Um, they did an EKG and literally the girl was like it was two seconds and then she quit and, and then it was over and i was like don't you need to wait until the actual heart palpitation happens because it was about every five minutes um two seconds wasn't cutting it and she was like this is just how we do it we just want a picture of your heart this is this is the process here and i argued a little bit but you could tell and this is what I'm dealing with a lot around the world that this girl has, this is the process for her. And she has no idea what to do if questioned about it. So I waited my, what, three more hours before I saw the doctor. And he pretty much told me I was drinking too much caffeine, which I, I wasn't drinking a lot of caffeine at the time. Um, I was concerned that it was my thyroid, so I kind of pushed to have my thyroid tested. But get this, he says, yes, we'll test your thyroid, we'll get you on a heart monitor, and he gave me like a little treatment plan. Well, then I left, and I contacted the place where I was supposed to do the heart monitor, and they're like, I'm sorry, you can't do that, you need a 
referral from a heart specialist. You can't be referred from the emergency room. And then I was waiting to get my thyroid results. And I was, I've been in many situations where I have to monitor my own health. And I just believe that that's the way it is today. You might have a provider that it's different for you, but I haven't had that circumstance in many, many years. So then I get my my results and the thyroid results never come, never come. So I contact the <laughs> the only person that I can contact, which I guess is the troubleshooter if you have issues with the emergency room. And she was like, we don't do that here. We don't do thyroid tests. You can't have that done. And I was like, okay, this basically you're telling me I went to the emergency room for no reason because this guy's um, treatment plan is invalid <laughs> in its entirety. And even the blood results that would help me figure out what's going on with me, I can't get. So she continued to say, no, no, there's nothing I can do. And then she finally, because I was like pushing for my care, I'm like, the hospital is a facility that you are supposed to be able to go to when you are having health issues. And I mean, you, the doctors have made an oath to treat people who are ill. And it's literally like, I just need to get this person in and out of here. And I had been to that hospital before when my dad had pneumonia and they did that to him as well. They, they sent us home and he was in sepsis and almost died just because it's like, you're just a number, just get him out of here. And I'm not going to name this hospital. I think that this might be an issue that's going on around the world with our healthcare. So I, I get this lady calls me back or emails me back. I can't remember and basically says, no, there's nothing that can be done. So I get a hold of the hospital administrator and I write a letter about me just seeking care and trying to at least, since this gentleman's treatment plan was obsolete, I couldn't do it <laughs> at all in its entirety how I believe that that's malpractice. You can't just have someone have their insurance pay you thousands of dollars and you didn't even do anything, right? It's fucking crazy. I'm giving you the whole long story. You can fast forward to where I'm getting at with me seeking my own treatment and trying to figure this out on my own because I've been going through this about a year, right? Um, Anyway, they got my thyroid results after I wrote a letter and expressed that I'm just trying to get care for myself and I can't even get that at the emergency room. I was very professional. I wasn't blaming. I said, I understand that these doctors have a lot on their plates, but you can't just give someone a treatment plan that's invalid. You, <laughs> the treatment plan has to be valid. Like. You can't pay someone. I'm not going to pay them for nothing. My insurance is going to pay them thousands of dollars because that's what the emergency room is. And anyway, I digress. So I get my thyroid results and that, that, that's an issue. My thyroid is high, which I had had high thyroid as a child. I started taking thyroid medication when I was eight. I took myself off it when I was 16 and I hadn't had to have it since then, but I did have it monitored off and on. Um, I did have to take it when I was pregnant with my second child for a few months because it was elevated. So my thyroid is elevated. I've just turned or I'm about to turn 50. I'm working out and I can feel my body changing. I'm not holding on to muscle. Fat is, I, I mean, my body is just changing and I know something is going on. So I try to go seek treatment with a naturopath because I couldn't get in to see anyone else. And I could get in to see her, I believe it was December. So September, October, November, December, I had to wait two and a half months. 
I believe it was December 16th. And this lady was very nice to me, seemed very caring. She took my blood and she was like, we'll test your hormones as well. And I get my results because you can get them on this my chart thing. And I never hear from her again. My, I don't know how to thoroughly read my hormones because especially they put it in these ovulation cycles and I've had a hysterectomy. I don't know when I'm ovulating. So it's even making it harder for me to know if I'm in menopause. But so she never gets in touch with me and I start just going more and more downhill. I get a hold of her in February and I sent her a message and I was like, look, I've never heard from you. And I literally feel like I'm dying and I don't know what to do. So she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. This was an error. Come in today and we'll, we'll take a look at things. So she kind of looks at those things and she's like, this has been what December, January, February, it had been two months. Let's take your blood again. Let's see where you're at now. And she tested a few other things and she's like, and we'll, we'll get this, we'll figure this out and we'll get this under control. I never heard from her again. <laughs> my thyroid. Okay. The first time my thyroid was high, but then in February, that second test. Okay. So I saw her in December. It was high. Then I have it tested in February and it's like zero. So I don't, I don't know what's happening here. Uh, things are out of control and I don't feel right. I keep gaining more and more weight no matter how hard I'm working out, no matter how clean I'm eating. And another thing I didn't tell you is in December, she was like, why don't you go on this fully clean diet? Like, no sugar in your coffee, which I don't have sugar in my coffee, but I have sweetener, but just eliminating everything. So I eliminated everything, but like berries, bananas, vegetables, and meat for six weeks. I didn't like candles. I wasn't using lotion. Like I just eliminated everything that isn't clean out of my life. And in all honesty, and I think it's because whatever is going on with my body medically, I just felt worse. It, or I should say the same. When I know when I'm eating clean normally, I feel fucking awesome. <laughs> but it's just continuing to go downhill, right? So... I get those results back. So it's probably like March. Well, she never calls me. She never emails me. She never writes me. And I'm feeling really discouraged at this moment. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to try to do this all on my own. So like a month passes, things just aren't getting any better. I, I feel the same and I'm not getting anywhere. And I don't, I mean, what do you do? <laughs> so I, I call around and trying to find like someone who says they're a provider of mine on my insurance, but I call and they're like, oh, we don't take that insurance anymore. So finally, I get a hold of someone who says they'll take my insurance, but I can't see them until August. <laughs> August. I think it was August 3rd. So... I have to take this thyroid thing into my own hands at this point, right? So I'm doing everything I can to level out my thyroid until August. I'm still, I'm partial, I'm not even really feeling like a human being anymore. I'm used to being very muscular, athletic, clean eating. I have so much endurance. My mind is clear. I meditate, you know, I'm doing all these things to be my best self, to be my healthiest self, to live from a place of abundance. <laughs> and none of it is really fucking working. So I'm doing the best I can till August to, you know, take these things into my hands and naturally care for myself. But I'm having headaches. 
no matter how much water I drink, I'm making sure I have electrolytes. Like I'm doing all these things and like normally I would feel fucking awesome and I don't. So this appointment rolls around in August and I have to tell you just another fucking disappointing situation where I literally feel like this guy comes in the room and he's like, he yells at me for something. And then he didn't even want to put me on thyroid. Even after I was telling him my history with thyroid when I was younger and how it's been elevated. The reason why he yelled at me is because I didn't have a provider when I moved here from Alaska to care for my thyroid even though I wasn't having thyroid issues and hadn't for years. And I expressed that since I found out, I've been trying to get a provider. Anyway, it was just very quick and like I was a number and he was on a timeline and I needed to get out of there. And he left the room and I was pretty stern that I needed thyroid treatment and I needed his help and that's why I was there and I was trying not to yell at him after he yelled at me I just was breathing and going Carol you need thyroid right this is I thought that this was like my main issue so he comes back in and he goes okay this is what we're going to do I'm going to I'm going to set you up on thyroid. He tells me the dosage he's going to give me. And he's like, and I'll send you to an endocrinologist and we'll get this all under control. So I'm like, fucking finally. So he leaves and the lady comes back in with the paper that you get that tells your care and the thyroid isn't on there. So there was another thing that wasn't on there too that we had discussed. So she leaves really quick before I can tell her the other thing isn't on there because he was about to go in with another patient. And he sends the thyroid medication to my local pharmacy, yada, yada. She comes back in and I'm like, okay, well, this other thing we discussed isn't on here. And she goes, yeah, we can't help you with that. And this is where I feel like I'm just explaining how the world is all over the place right now. Like no one wants to really help you with anything. You're an inconvenience to them. And I don't feel like anyone's really taking their job. And I shouldn't say anyone. I feel there are people out there who are taking their job seriously. And when I come in contact with those people, I make sure to tell them how amazing they are because I feel like a majority of the people, I don't know if it was COVID, the state of the world. I don't know what it is, but I feel like people just don't care about their jobs or you anymore. You are just in their way of ending their day. So here I am waiting to see the endocrinologist and I've been watching Barbara O'Neill and listening to a lot of information about menopause because i I'm still wondering, I'm still having symptoms, even though my thyroid is being taken care of. I am not like mentally I'm foggy. Things are going on. The weight isn't coming off, even though I've been on thyroid for a while and I'm working out hard. I'm eating healthy. I've even had some calorie restrictive weeks, just testing the ebb and flow of what is going on with me and nothing is working. So. This is where I'm at, but I wanted to tell you that we are in charge of ourselves, right? And this is what I'm trying to do, be in charge of myself. So I'm working on these natural ways of fixing high estrogen, which I'm going to be making my own wild yam cream, which is basically a natural progesterone, if I said that right. And working to like figure this menopause thing out on my own for now. I am going to see this endocrinologist soon. And I'm, I would love if this is a different thing than what I've been going through this last year. I would like to manifest that this person at least will be able to 
test my hormones and test my thyroid and let me know where I'm at so I can figure it out on my own. But this is what I wanted to tell you. If you are in some sort of cycle like this where you're trying to care for yourself and it just seems like it's going nowhere, I fucking understand where you're coming from and breathe. Breathe, research it, become your own advocate. I had to advocate for my father when he went into the hospital. They literally were treating him like he was an invalid and because he was in his 80s. And I had to, every different person that came in, I had to say, no, this man is like, he has more endurance than I do. And like his mental faculty is better than mine, or like is, at least on the same level, he is not a diminishing person. And I had to fight for him because they were just going to put him in un some aftercare facility and have someone come to his house for the rest of his life. Fight for yourself in any way possible. And Start looking for natural ways to, like, stop eating processed food, let go of sugar, work out anyway, and do things anyway, even though these things are challenging, because that's what I am going to do. I'm not going to let this world stop me from being who I love to be, and I will figure this the fuck out. Uh, I just want you to know if you're going through something like this, you're not alone. And it takes, it's, it's a challenge, but you got this. You just got to work on your mindset and take it day by day, meditate, try to get activity in, even if it's just walks, work on your food and your nutrients. Some things that we're doing is we have um, some hydroponics going. We're getting chickens. So we'll have our own organic eggs. I have microgreens going all the time. We're working on getting a half cow. All these things that you can do that can help you. But another big thing that I'm not sure everyone knows is. Oxygen is something that our body needs. So doing breath work is really important. Having a low acidic diet. If you're having a lot of trouble reducing your caffeine or even eliminating it altogether, getting those walks in, make sure you're sleeping good. Make sure that you're getting some sun in the morning and vitamin D for sure. I've slacked on my vitamin D because it was summer and I also think that was a mistake. And don't kill yourself over mistakes like that. Just get, get back up off the ground and get back on the horse. You got this. I hope this helps you out. I know it was kind of a weird mindful Monday, but... I really want you to understand that if you're going through these weird things in the world, you're not alone. Uh, a lot of people are experiencing it and let's just stick together. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you can relate to this fucking video and I'll see you next time. I love you.